Welcome back, Wolfpack. Verl is here. Danny bringing us a battle with Hitmonlee. I also see a Crawdot mirror, some good stall Pokemon on both sides, and some decent sweeping. So we're going to see how this one ends up going through. I'm excited for this battle. This one looks like it's going to be a really solid battle overall. And also, as we get in, we get to find out that it's a 52-turn battle. So I'm going to grab my Monster Energy drink. I'm going to take, take a nice long swig right here. You guys better get ready, because it looks like we're going to have a really awesome battle. So Mind Xiao, it doesn't like Crobat. It's a fighting type. Crobat's a flying type. They kind of don't get along. So we have Crobat coming in, using the Brave Bird onto Gliscor now. We're going to see if this was a good switch. Takes less than half, so yeah, I'd say it was a decent switch. A little more than a third, though. So Black Sludge comes in, starts healing up all that recoil from the Crobat. And Toxic Orb comes in, but you don't get the Toxic Heal just yet on that switch. So, we're going to watch Brave Bird come in again. Not do enough damage to knock out. Glyscore, though, he's going to be playing it safe. Goes for the Roost. Not bad, so he's going to get a lot of health back. And then the Poison Heal, going to give him an extra 8th as well. So, it looks like these guys are at a bit of a stalemate. Crobat is in the slightly worse position because he is taking more damage than he is healing back up. But I believe Crobat would probably also have Roost as well. So we're going to watch this kind of just back and forth for a while. That's what I'm expecting here. You know, there's some recoil damage. Glasscore going with the knockoff. Does a good amount of damage. Takes off that Black Sludge. So now that heal is not going to be there anymore. Poison Heal bringing him back over health, over half. And then there's the Roost from Crobat. Um, uh, where's my ma where's my monster? There it is. This this is one of those battles of stubbornness and wits because both sides don't want to give up because they feel that they could squeak out an edge at some point. But at the same time, nothing is going to happen. Oh, here we go. U-turn coming in from Probat. Not going to do really any damage, but it is kind of the safer switch option. You're not giving your opponent anything too free, and it does work out. So in comes Swagzire. I don't know how this one's going to be. Glasscore going for that knockoff, using its only offensive move, takes away the leftovers. Glasscore with that poison heal, back up to full health. And Glasscore switches out, so my guess, Glasscore not running toxic. If it was, Swagzire would be in for some pain. But, interesting match right here. So Cronaut coming in onto the Glasscore, getting burnt, oh that's just, that's a damn shame. But, because the thing is, what makes Quagzire so strong is that with its unaware ability, you're not going to be able to set up against it. So, that Dragon Dance isn't really going to be doing too much, and the burn is is not going to be good as well. So, Yawn does fail because of the burn. Opponent misplayed right there, probably didn't catch that, you know. With that burn, it's not going to be able to go to sleep. Crab Hammer comes in, does a decent amount of natural damage, but overall that burn really hurting it, and Quagsire with the recover. Is it a sin to call it Quagsire, or should I just stick with Swagsire? It's Mr. Swag over there. He doesn't care. He's unaware. Oh snap, that was good. A triple, triple rhyme. So Crab Hammer's going to keep coming in. It's not really going to accomplish much because of that unaware. You can't really break down anything right there. And Earthquake is going to finish off Crawdown because of the burn. That was an unfortunate switch in, but again, can't really catch anything on that. So now comes Garchomp. They're really the only what Swords Dance. I don't I don't know. I don't think the ally's aware of unaware. You need to go. Go back and watch my Quagsire OP video. You're just kind of giving him a lot of freeness. So, really the only way you can take out Quagsire is just straight power, overrunning it with some kind of hit that has to be a two-hit KO or even a one-hit KO, because it's going to be able to out-recover and out-yawn you as well. So, Garchomp, he's drowsy, he's going to use that Earthquake, and now we're going to see, yeah, that plus four didn't really mean much, did it? So free recover for Quagsire, and that's like that's the thing, you have to hit it super almost. That if you're packing grass, you're going to be good against that Quagsire. But until that point, huh, you're gonna have a very hard time. So Garchomp, he realizes he's in a bad position, switches out. You also have to status Quag Quagsire as well. So Gliscor comes in. He can't be yawn, and he's not gonna take much damage, so he can taunt out the Gliscor or the Quagsire. Still just really interesting. So Scald. It's going to be a decent amount of damage, but not enough, so it can, he can be outstalled through Poison Heal and uh, Roosting. And since it's really his only option, it's going to be alright. So Earthquake coming in on Swagzire, just showing the tankiness. I'd imagine that this is maybe just a pure physical swag, Swagzire that max out the hit points, max out the 
uh, defense, and then just kind of leave your special defense open. Most of the time, it's going to be a super effective grass type hit from special attacks, so I really wouldn't worry about special too much. Maybe just put a touch of um, special defense investment, but not not really needed against a team like this. So there's the critical hit. I can tell just from the amount of damage right there. And overall, it's just going to be stalling out this skull that because of that poison heal, you're not going to see any kind of um, setup from the burn, or you're not going to see any burn coming in. Quagsire doesn't have to worry about anything. So yeah, this is a kind of crazy battle. So and also, no one wants to switch in. Like, I don't. I wouldn't want to switch out of my glass guard. I'd rather PP burn that scald or the earthquake or something. Because if you switch in, you have the chance of taking extra damage, getting burned, and with a lot of the physical Pokemon on the team right now, it's not a good thing to see. So, Danny's not looking too good. Okay, so the opponent does back down, his stubbornness does cave, and now we become in Breaker. Ah, yeah, Crawdon is going to be the ultimate wall-breaking Pokemon, of course. Sets up a Dragon Dance, has so much raw offensive power, and then Crab Hammer just comes in and ruins people's day. It also has Technician, or no, it's, it's Adaptability that it gets. With Adaptability, it's going to be hitting almost everything super effective and more. So there's the knockoff. Taking away that item, Toxic Orb, doesn't really matter right now, but doing a ton of damage. And yeah, Glyscore is like, hey, I don't want to have to worry about this anymore. Let's going to Garchomp, who's going to try to catch up with the Swords Dance, is my guess. So Crab Hammer's going to come in. Neutral hit on Garchomp is going to be a monstrous one. Rough Skin does a bit of damage, but Crawdon is incredibly slow. So Garchomp's going to get that Earthquake in first. Is it enough? Yes, it is. Crawdon also kind of frail Pokemon, so it needs to really Dragon Dance, or it needs to not get, needs to get a better prediction on a switch like that. So Garchomp does switch out. And go in back into Glass Score. So, man, now we can see why this battle is 50 turns. Can't really gain any ground right here. But, hmm, that Skull did a little, little bit right there. Is there enough because of that switch to roost it out? Yes, because Glass Score is faster. My bad, I thought that, like, uh, Sweat Exire was going to move first and then that was going to create some problems with the Skull. But yeah, Skull doing 70 mm, ish damage. But Glasscore, you know, if it takes the hit, it's like Poison Heal, I can Roost, I can get the heal in first, and I'll be okay. So Glasscore just staying back at full hit points, trying to burn down that Scald from Swagzire. Swagzire just, yeah, he doesn't have much to do. He's going to try to burn, he's going to try to get things done, but, like, that's the great thing about having Glasscore on your team, is you kind of prevent status from happening. So there's Charizard coming in. Charizard, decent potential switch. Ooh, double switch. So both people are like, I don't want to have to deal with Swagzire versus this anymore. So Charizard Y shows up. Charizard switches out though. Interesting. And Glasscore! Score comes back in. So Confuse Ray. But that's not going to really do too much, it looks like. <sighs> this is a true battle of wits right now. Shadow Sneak coming into Glasscore. Not doing anything. It's really going to be boiling down to that confusion. And Glasscore hits itself. So that's what that is. Glasscore also running out of Roost, most likely. That there is a lot of stall, PP stall going on both ways. So Shadow Sneak's going to keep coming in, trying to do something. Glasscore is going to keep hitting itself, potentially. Now it gets the knockoff. Ooh, that's going to be a big hit. Even with the super effective removing Eviolite. Still a lot of hit. Uh, still a lot of bulk right there coming in from Dusclops. But now Dusclops, a bit less tanky. Losing a lot of its pure raw strength from that Eviolite. And Pain Split comes in. Gains a small amount of health. Glasscore drops some health as well. And that's what we're looking at. You can't do anything to this Glasscore. Can't Will-O-Wisp it. You can't take out any extra, like, status onto it. And now it's Pack and Taunt, so... Yeah. Can't use Confuse Ray, can't really do anything. Much, much stall. Such, such everything. Swagzire, back in play. Can I, I want to like skip through all this. This is ridiculous, but I want to see him on Lee. Like this is one of those raw, stubborn battles though. But it does show a lot of Glyscore's strength. That when you bring Glyscore to the table, 
I think we've had like the most battles for Fan Fridays go over 50 because the glass score comes in. That if they can't, that if they can't handle that glass score, it's going to be a long battle. You might not win it, but glass score is going to really disrupt the opponent hard. So with that Charizard Y though, we're going to get that free evolution coming in and goes into Squishy Gudra. So Charizard Y going to evolve and wondering if he was throwing down the Solar Beam. Solar Beam not going to be the most ridiculous thing against the Gudra with that special defense, but we're going to see how much damage does come in. So Solar Beam, there it is. Swagzire was afraid of Solar Beam, decided to not waste any time. Sap Sipper, oh man, that Gudra with the Sap Sipper. Now Charizard's like, well, damn, I can't hit you for anything. I could maybe Air Slash for like a third, but there's really no point. Aqua Tail, interesting amount of coverage on the Gudra, but Glass score, two defensive tank. It just goes in, eats the hit, heals most of it back up. And back comes in Dusclops. Yep. Yep. So knockoff kind of like if anything, Glass score is setting up for a potential later sweep. Knocking off a lot of items, trying to really cover through. Like, you know, at least Quagsire doesn't have leftovers anymore. Earthquake doing a good amount of damage now that the life will, or that the Eviolite is gone. But Pain Split heals a lot of it back up. And this is where, like, if you want to take out Dusclops, you do have to take some risks. You have to stay in low health so you can take away its heal engine. But now, switching away, going back into Squishy. It's just such a Gudra kind of name. So there's the free taunt. But it looks like Knockoff's going to have to come in later as well. Trying to just spread around all those lack of items. So knockoff, we get to see what Gudra was packing. Assault Vest! So all offense on this Gudra, going to try to not take a lot of damage, actually not going to take any dam damage special defensively. Poison Heal comes in, Aqua Tail not doing a ridiculous amount, Glass Score does switch out. With that water prediction, Charizard comes in. So Drought's going to reappear, which is really good to see. Now that the Assault Vest is gone, Charizard can do a decent amount of damage, and Aqua Tail isn't going to hit for as much because it's going to be reduced. It's still a KO though. Aw, oh, critical hit. So the prediction there, not coming through. Just enough. Taunt wears off, but Taunt doesn't matter on the Assault Vest. And Mind Shao comes in. So after the sacrifice, Mind Shao finally has a chance to do things, but we get to see Dusclops. So is that going to eat the high jump kick? Is it going to get the prediction? Or Mind Shell going with the knockoff itself? Huge amount of special damage, or super effective damage. Withdraw on the Dusclops into Swagzire. And knockoff yet again. Just kind of checking that damage. Now it's going to kind of be an annoying little battle that, you know, if the opponent wants to switch, there is a lot of risk for that high jump kick. So Danny swaps out, brings in Gliscor again. Just the way of handling this Swagzire. So Scald comes in, does 40 damage, super effective. Glasscore Poison heals a lot of it back and then gets to go and set up even more with the Roost and get all of its health back. <sighs> Thunder Mountain. So now we finally see a little bit different, you know. Taunt, ooh, Taunt comes in, but that's not really going to affect the Mega Manetric, is it? Wonder what how what Minetric's gonna to try to do to handle this guy. Is he just gonna rush in with the flamethrower or overheat? Try to just one hit gambit this uh glass score? We'll find out. Intimidate doesn't do anything. Hidden power. Oh, okay. Hidden power ice? What was he waiting for? That could have that whole stall could have been ended in the blink of an eye right there. Him on Lee comes out now. So now we finally get to see him only. We make it all this way in the battle. Thunder Mountain gets withdrawn. This dude comes back in. Is it a prediction? Or is it just going to be a whiff on the ghost type attack? Lychee Berry, so it's the Endure Lychee Berry set. Very interesting. Him only with the Stone Edge. Just go throw those stones, knock out Dusclops. Critical hit. Mmm, I don't think it mattered because Eviolite is gone. So it is the Lychee Endure set. Nice. So there's the Endure. He's just like, yeah, bring it on, come on, let's do this. Brave Bird comes in, and we know Brave Bird is going to be a super effective hit. That's going to 
most likely knock it out under any circumstance. So Lychee Berry, Endure comes in, and now we get to see if it outspeeds. If it outspeeds the Crobat, we're going to be looking at a good battle right now. So Stone Edge comes in. Fortunately, it does not miss. If it missed, that would have been incredibly upsetting. Super effective hit. Crobat does go down. Thunder Mountain comes in. And now we get to see if the raw power of the now plus zero Hitmonlee has enough with that reversal. So 300 base power. Boom! Just kicks it right in the face. That's a KO. And now Swagzire. Swagzire has to deal with that reversal, and I don't think it's going to happen. So... We, have, we had a lot of stall, a lot of just attempting to set up, a lot of stubbornness on both sides. Come on, Danny, you could have done this a little earlier to save me some time. But now we're just going to go through the reversal romp. And that's three Pokemon down. Here comes the fourth. And just like that, him only reverses the tide of the battle. Just a lot of ridiculousness coming in. And that's the battle. So I hope you guys enjoyed it i know it was a bit long i know i was probably a bit boring at some points because it was essentially the same thing over and over i had to banter it through but we did see him only do some hard work and that was pretty nice so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you all have a nice day